the bony pelvis refers to the irregular but nevertheless complete bony ring made up of the sacrococcygeal part of the vertebral column posteriorly and the two hip bones at the sides and in front. The two hip bones are joined to each other anteriorly at the pubic symphysis, which is a very strong union and is a secondary cartilaginous joint. In fact, in my view, the finest example of a secondary cartilaginous joint in the body. Posterolaterally, each hip bone articulates with its side of the sacrum at the sacroiliac joint, which in fact is a synovial joint. When the bony pelvis is pictured in its proper anatomical orientation, it is seen to have a very pronounced and fixed forward tilt. The inner aspect of the bony pelvis shows a more or less continuous ridge which is referred to as the pelvic brim. Posteriorly, this ridge is made up of the sacral promontory, which is the anterior lip of the upper surface of the sacrum. And on either side of the sacral promontory is the iliopectineal line on the inner surface of the hip bone. Traced anteriorly, the iliopectineal line becomes continuous with the pubic crest on the upper surface of the pubis of its side, and thus the two iliopectineal lines and the pubic crests meet anteriorly at the pubic symphysis, completing the pelvic brim. In the anatomical position of the bony pelvis, you will see that the plane of the pelvic brim is not horizontal, but rather downwards and forwards. Obstetricians frequently refer to the pelvic brim as the pelvic inlet, or sometimes the superior aperture of the pelvic cavity. The pelvic brim is an important anatomical and surgical landmark, because above the pelvic brim is the false pelvis which encloses the lower end of the abdominal cavity. In fact, on either side, the inner surface of the hip bone forms the lateral boundary of the corresponding iliac fossa. Thus, you have right and left iliac fossae. The right iliac fossa typically contains the cecum and appendix and the ileocecal junction and the terminal ilium. The left iliac fossa contains the sigmoid colon. Below the plane of the pelvic brim is the true pelvic cavity. And this pelvic cavity has a flaw, the pelvic diaphragm. To put it simply, the pelvic floor is made up of two muscular sheets, one on the right side and one on the left, each being the levator ani muscle of that side. And the two levator ani muscles interdigitate with each other in an anteroposterior direction, from the back of the recto anal junction to the tip of the coccyx. In fact, this interdigitation is called the anococcygeal raphe. Each levator ani muscle arises from a facial thickening, in fact, a linear facial thickening, on the inner aspect of the obturator internus muscle, which is a wide muscle that drapes the inner surface of the true pelvic cavity. Each levator ani muscle is described as having two parts. The posterior half of the levator ani muscle is referred to as the iliococcygeus, and the anterior half is called the pubococcygeus. Anteriorly, there is a natural gap between the medial edges of the right and left levator ani muscles. And this gap is called the levator hiatus. And it's through this gap that the rectum and the vagina and the urethra leave the pelvic cavity. Strictly speaking, a pelvic organ is one that lies between the pelvic brim above and the pelvic floor below. You're